Hi there, and welcome to your very first video done by me, Mrs. Teets, in Poughkeepsie High School for Algebra 2. Hopefully you're going to like this way of learning because the nice thing is, it's not that you can ask questions, obviously, because I can't hear you, but you can rewind things, you can go over them, you can basically read along with me if you want to. You can watch it and then write things down. So hopefully you're coming in with a little bit more knowledge than if you had watched me doing it live. But then we'll always have the opportunity to go over some questions as we um, review the concept before we move into the classwork. Okay, so here we go. So this is Common Core Algebra 2. These are the notes. And this is lesson 2.1, which is the introduction to functions. Now, functions should be nothing new to you. You've seen them in Algebra 1, but, you know, sometimes we always forget things. So I'd like to take a moment just to redefine things. So um, most higher level mathematics is built upon the concept of a function. Like most of the important concepts in mathematics, the definition of a function is, a, is simple to point is simple to the point of being easily overlooked. Make sure to know this following definition. All right, so this is going to be one of the definitions you're putting on your index card or you're using you're putting in Quizlet or something along those lines because vocabulary will be checked. So a function is any rule that assigns exactly one output, which is the y value, for each input value, which is your x value. These rules can be expressed by different ways, the most common being equations, graphs, tables, and values. We call the input variable independent, and we call the output variable dependent. We also consider the input variables being our domain and the output variables being our range. Now, before we move on to exercise one, I kind of want to go through that rule one more time of talking about a function, and I want to do it using an example of birthdays. I like this example because for me, it makes things a little bit clearer, so hopefully it'll do the same to you as well. So let's for say, for example, now this is not on your worksheet, so just pay attention and see if you can kind of, you know, understand as I'm doing it. And then if you want to write it down, you can always take notes opposite, you know, on a different page. So here are three people, Alex, Ben, and Callie, and here are three birthdays, August 5th, January 15th, and May 3rd. So let's say for an example, there's nothing set in stone here, so let's just say for ease of our map here that Alex's birthday is on August 5th, Ben's birthday is on January 5th, and Callie's birthday is on May 3rd. This functions beautifully, right, because every person has their own birthday. So this functions well. but can we consider something like this? Does this also function? Can Callie share a birthday with Ben and say that the Callie and Ben are both born on January 15th? Yep, that's okay too. So you can have so you can have Alex having a birthday in August. You can have Ben having a birthday in January, and you can have Callie having that birthday in May. That was our original map. But it's also okay if Alex is still in August, Ben is in January, but also Callie is in January. So that's okay, because basically it says that every input has to have at most one output. All right, so you can see how even though the Y's here, our outputs actually repeat, that's okay, as long as our X's don't repeat. Because remember, these are our X values, these are our Y values. Sometimes we also call these our inputs. We call these our outputs. We also can call this the domain, which are our X values, and we can call this the range. So again, pulling in all of this vocabulary that we've talked about so far. Now let's think about something that doesn't fly, all right, that doesn't function well. All right, so let's go back, let's erase this and say, all right, how about if Alex's birthday, we'll keep him in August, all right, let's say Ben's birthday is also in August, but let's say in this case, let's double up the X. Can Ben have a birthday in May as well? Does this function? Can one person have two birthdays? 
No, they can't. This does not function. So this is not a function because it does not function properly. And basically we're saying that Alex has a birthday in August and Ben has a birthday in August, which is okay, but Ben cannot have a birthday in May. All right, so this is the problem right here. We, you cannot have your inputs repeating with different outputs. So that's the rule. So if you think about it like that, like I think to myself, one person can have two birthdays. So if you think about it that way, you say, and you constantly think one person, whenever you think about having a function, cannot have two birthdays. So you can use this as your definition of something not being a function, because we're just going to take the word person, and we're going to change that with input. So one input cannot have two outputs. Okay? Some people also like to say that um, you cannot repeat the x values with different y values. Now, I, took, I just took a lot of time to talk about that, but I feel like functions are a little bit confusing, and this is one way I always like to start when I talk about functions, especially in my Algebra 1 classes, because it kind of gives meaning to what function is. Does it function properly? And that's what we're talking about. All right, so now we can start going back. Now, if you want to pause this and you kind of want to write this down a little bit, maybe put this on one of your index cards for your... Um, for your vocabulary, this is a great time to do that. All right? So when you're done with that, meet me at exercise one. Okay, so I'm going to slide up here. An internet music service offers a plan whereby users pay a flat monthly fee of $5 and then download songs for 10 cents each. This is the way iTunes used to work. I don't know if that's still the way it does work. So what are the independent and the dependent variables in this scenario? Well, what does one, what does one have to do in order to figure out the money? All right, so your dependent variable here is going to be the amount it costs. And what does it depend on? How many songs. So number of songs. So if we look down at our table that I've already filled out in B, or started anyway, fill out the table below for a variety of independent values. So let's say, for example, you don't download any songs. How much is it going to cost you? So amount charged is going to be your Y. So here's my X, here's my Y. But remember, we have a flat monthly fee of $5. So if you don't download anything, it's still going to cost you 5 bucks. Now, they're 10 cents each. So five songs is going to cost you 50 cents. Be careful with the 10 cents. 10 cents is 0.10. So times 5 is 0 0.50, so this is going to cost 550. 10 cents is going to cost you an entire dollar. So this is going to cost six dollars. And then once you start seeing the pattern, this is now going to be now be careful, 15's not there, right? Because normally we go we went from zero to five to ten. And if you wanted to put 15 in your table, you could, but it actually isn't here. So 20 songs is going to cost you two dollars add it on to your $5 monthly fee, and it's going to cost you $7. So there's your table. Remember, at any given time, if I'm going too fast, you hit that pause button. So C says, let the number of downloads represented by the variable X and the amount charged in dollars represented by the variable Y, and it says write an equation that models y as a function of f. 
So I'm hoping that you see that this is linear. It goes up at a constant rate. So my function is going to be f of x. We don't use y anymore when we get into algebra 2. So f of x is equal to, this is linear, so what do we start with? That's our y-intercept. We begin when our x is 0. So that's our positive 5, our y-intercept. And how much does it move by each, by each 1? Now be careful, by each 1. So the table I just set up has 0, 5, 10, 20. But if you put this as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, how much does it go up by? 0 0.10 times x. All right, so again, this is my y-intercept. This is where I begin. That means this is where I begin when x is equal to 0. All right, and this is my slope, my m, and it's how we move. So how do we move from one to the other? We add another 10 cents each time. So based on the equation you found in part C, produce a graph of this function for all values of x on the interval between 0 and 40. So it means you don't have to go beyond that, only 0 to 40. And it says you can use a calculator table to generate this if you had your calculator at home with you. So why don't you take a minute and draw your graph. Yes, that means pause the video, draw your graph, and then come back to me. So I'm hoping the first thing you did now, because the scale was given to you, makes sense of the scale. So the first thing I did was try to figure out, okay, on my Y, on my amount charged, I realize it's going up by 50 cents. So 50 cents, $1, I'm sorry, $1, 150 $2, 250 $3. And on the x-axis, you can see how it goes by twos. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So that should be the first thing that you're doing. Now, I'm also a fan of graphing friendly numbers, which are integers. All right, I'm not going to graph the 550 and the 650 and all those. I'm going to look for my nice integers. So I know it's 0. So there's my first, my first dot right here. At 0, I know it's $5. So that's where I start, my y-intercept. At 10, so I come down here to 10, and I go up and I hit 6. I go to 20, and I hit 7. And as you can see the pattern, at 30, I would be at 8. And at 40, I would be at 9. Now, if you're doing this properly, when you put a straight edge to this, you should get a nice straight line. So let's pick a nice straight edge. Start here, go straight across, and there is my line. Now, the question is, should we draw a line? Maybe we shouldn't. Because this is going to be discrete data. In other words, can I download two and a half songs? So that's what it would look like, all right? So that's going to be a whole other conversation of whether or not we should be attaching these points with a line. But for now, that's kind of what it looks like. We have a linear pattern. Okay, I think we answered all the questions here. So let's go move on to our next part. Exercise 2. One of the following graphs shows a relationship where y is a function. So, so they're saying one of the following graphs shows the relationship where y is a function and, and one does not, okay? So A says draw the vertical line whose equation is x equals 3. So x equals 3, remember that means that you're going through the point x and it's going to be a vertical line. So x equals 3 right there on both graphs. So one, two, three, and here's another one right here. And it says, so we did that, done. B says, give all output values for each graph of an input of three. So in relationship three, I have, so you're asking yourself, where does it actually hit the function or the relationship in this situation? So in A, I have the point, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, but I also have the point, okay, a quick interruption there. So at this point, we have a second point that also is, um, 
has a x value of 3, and that's 3, negative 4. So if we take a look then at our relationship B, we only have one point down here, which is 3, negative 2, which is um, a point on that function. So it says explain which of these relationships is a function and why. So take a minute and try and come up with an, uh, a solution or a, an explanation there, okay? When you're done, come back to me. You might write something like relationship A is not a function because, big word, whenever you explain something, you need that word because, because it has two y values for the same x value. And actually, if you move that line around, you'll see how it hits in various spots. Whoops. It hits in various spots in um, two spots. So if you look at relationship B, if I move that vertical line, it only hits that parabola in one spot. So you can basically say relationship B is a function. because every x value has only one y value. Make sure that when they ask you to explain why something is a function or not, that you are using the definition of a function. Okay, so let's take a look at exercise three. Again, make sure you pause if you didn't get a chance to write that down. So the graph of the function y equals x squared minus 4x plus 1 is shown below. State the function's y-intercept. Well, that's easy enough. There's the y-axis. The y-intercept sits, sits right here. So the y-intercept is simply just the number 1. You don't put the, put the actual point down. Between what two consecutive integers does the larger x-intercept lie? So x-intercepts are here and here. So here's the larger one, this one here. So actually, this one here. So it falls between 1, 2, 3, and 4. So between 3 and 4. Because that's what the word consecutive means. It means 2, 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, right after each other. So draw a horizontal line at the y at the line y equals negative 2 on this graph. So y equals negative 2. Oops, wrong one. Y equals negative 2. That would be right here. Using these two graphs, find all values of x that solve the equation. So you have this being the parabola and this being the line y equals negative 2. So basically what we had was y equals x squared minus 4x plus 1 and we had y equals negative 2 and what we did down here was set them equal to each other. So we're looking for the intersecting points. So what values, remember now this is going to be a set, we use set notation. So what values of x well, here's one of them right here. So this is going to be x is 1. And here's the other one right here. This is x is 3. So the answers are 1 and 3. Verify that these values of x are solutions by using the store on your calculator. I can't show you how to do that now. Well, I could show you how to do it, but you don't have the calculators at home. So remind me, and we will make sure that we go over that tomorrow if you do not know how to use the store function in your calculator. All right, so here's your classwork. This is what you're going to be doing as soon as you come in tomorrow. If there are any questions before you start the classwork, make sure you are asking them of me before you begin doing your work, or you can always call me over and we can work on it together.
okay make sure you're using your groups first ask them and then make sure you ask me after them all right until next time have a great day and like i always say at the end of every one of my videos make good choices